Hello and welcome along to Mondo Channel Vet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be a vlog of our holidays that we just had in London. And it's the first video ever to feature Deborah. So Deborah, we have had a holiday in um, London and we thoroughly enjoyed it. In this video, I'm going to be putting in some clips from the video that was shot in, in Ireland. I'm going to talk a little bit about London, a few things that were so. So in this video, I'll intersperse. Wow. So in this video, I'll intersperse it with video clips or <laughs> so video clips or photographs to a sort of take you through what we're talking about. If we're talking about certain things, we can show the videos or the pictures like we've done before on the last one. But the difference is Deborah is actually on camera this time. It took a long time. It took three and a half years, but I've got her in. Now, what we're going to do uh, after that, we're going to be talking about the rankings of Star Trek, the movies which we both thoroughly enjoyed. And I would like to think that we could talk about our, you know, views on that and you could rank them and see how your ranking differs from mine. And in the video, we're going to, I'm going to be, had some pickups from, I didn't get anything from CEX because there's a bit of a bust there. And the fact that the two CEXs down there were pretty hopeless, if I'm honest. And I'll show you what I got from FOP. And also I'll show you a couple of things that I got from HMV the other day. So anyway, the first thing we're going to have to talk about is this, ABBA. Look where that train station is. What was that like? I have to say, I've never ever seen anything like that before. Well, uh... when we're in there, and it's bit, I mean, there'd be a few clips of when we went to go and see it. You'll see how I got there. And I'll also do some photographs of when we're in there because you couldn't take any footage in there or you'd be chucked out. So I had to pay by the rules. It would have been great to pay all that money. And they actually had to pay extra money to get the tickets printed up. That's a different story. We went with a sort of, it's one of those things where you just think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to go and see other. So uh, what was your thoughts on when you when you actually first see other on the stage? What did you think? Well, you think it was, oh, it's actually them, don't you? They look quite where, good. where you do? Yeah. Because it's, um, it's, it's them, isn't it? Because obviously it's the, um, the holograms, but for a hologram, it's just a solid person on a stage, isn't it? It's not actually anything you would have to think, oh, that looks like a projected image. It looked like a solid person, didn't it? And they were moving with each other, shaking each other's hands. You know what I mean? Putting their arms around each other. And I thought, this is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The crowd were going insane. And uh, we had a great time. We were doing all this. We <laughs> were doing all this, didn't we? What was it? Ch Chikatita. Chikatita, everybody knows. And uh, it were like... But you just got into it, didn't you? I thought it was a, a fascinating event. If you can ever get to go and see Abba, you've got to go and see them because it was uh, it's something else, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. So I went to FOB, didn't I? Do you think? Many that, times. Well, how many times? Only four. Uh, In and, one day. Uh, But I was trying to get a, a deal going, but there was no deals on there. I was looking through Arrow 88. There was nothing there, but I indicated I had the biggest sale on there, 2 for 15. So, uh, yeah, so this is the stuff that I got from, from FOP. This is the 2 for 15 and the indicator sale. I'll just put them over there so you can see what, what things I went for. There's a good one for you. In Seminoid, it's a Category 3 Video Nasty. I know you're a big fan of Video Nasty, Deborah, aren't you? 
Yeah. There you go. The Snorkel. That's a Hammer movie. I've got four Hammer movies, Deborah. The Camp on Blood Island. This is a war movie. I thought it was a horror film, but it's not. Not that I'm bothered. Just like Hammer stuff. The Damned, starring Oliver Reed. And Never Take Sweets from a Stranger. I know. What a title there. Eh? And this was one, we're going up to the shop when I was buying this stuff. When I spotted this one, I thought I've got to have this one. Because it's the one that I've been, after watching it for a long time, you've seen these ones, haven't you? I believe. Yeah. Uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Both of them. Uh, Pet Detective and When Nature Calls. I think I do prefer When Nature Calls. That's another story. And when I went to um, CX in, actually when I come back, I went to HMB. There was nothing in HMB to get. So I had to go to CX and uh, spend some money, obviously. So I've got the Swinging Cheerleaders. It's not what you think, you know. Oh, actually, tell a lie. Another one I got from Fock is Star Trek, the animated series. This was uh, £20. That was £8. Actually, that was that was £15. We get two movies. The two movies are on one disc, unfortunately, but they do look good. And... I remember seeing this on uh, on TV. Did you watch this at all? No. Think? No. You weren't fan. You weren't a fan of Star Trek, no. but after seeing them, you are. And we are weirdly enough watching Six Million Dollar Man, and in the in the episode we're watching at the moment, Captain Kirk's in there, isn't he? Because John had a habit of starting a series, stopping it halfway through, going on to something else. So by that time, I forgot about the other series, like the continuity of them. Well, if I can just butt in for one second, we were watching Star Trek, the original series, and it was great. But Steve Austin came along, Six Million Dollar Man, and I thought, well, what we'll do is we'll check it out and see what we think of it. And to be honest, it's not too bad a thing to watch when you're having your tea and you're not watching anything grotesque, uh, usually. Um, Star Trek's not bad. Some some things you just can't watch when you're... Well, I can't watch when you're having your tea because it's so awful. But this one looks because all I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, screenshots of all of these on uh, the videos when I talk about them, so you'll see that. And lastly, I got uh, the one movie that a lot of people cannot stand. When I, we had a good time watching it, I would say twice in IMAX, once with uh, Matthew and once with the Devs. So, um, so let's let's talk about the Devs. You love the word the Devs, don't you? I don't. So why don't you like it? I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't like it. I don't know, but all your mates call you the devs, don't they? No, not really. Well, they do. Sharon does. That's one. <laughs> yeah, no, but the, when you're in a, a group of them, they are always say, oh, the devs this, the devs that. So I call you the devs, and you take it from them. They do. And you, t- you take it from them, but when I say, um, oh, the devs, you go, oh, no, no. Shame, I'm going down there. You had a great view didn't he, on your side, because there's nobody sitting there and pulling blind down. So there's probably photographs of Deborah sticking a thumb up and saying, brilliant. My view, on the other hand, wasn't so good. I won't talk about it too much, but I will put a picture on of what I kind of had to look at. Well, here we are in Trafalgar Square. It's, it's uh, been snowing. <laughs> It's absolutely boiling, isn't it? It is. I know. It's the first time in our lives that we bought sunglasses. And we couldn't, buy, couldn't find them anywhere, which is nuts. But as the dulcet tones of whatever that racket is behind us <laughs> floats across the banks of the Trafalgar River. You know what it is? Come here, there's more. We're in Trafalgar Square, in the heart of London. Everybody wants our spot. There's miles of the wall, and I've got about 15 people standing next to us. Never. 
You probably can't hear what I'm saying because of all that rocket going on behind us. It's not a rocket, is it? Well, it's because I want to speak. I can't hear myself being speak. Never mind. How was that for a view? Come on. I know. What we're going to do now is we're going to go down to Buck Palace, see if Charlie's in, and have a word with him. And see what he is, because I'm going to win for a while. Usually when I come down here, we'll get, you know, meet up in the Costa Coffee, have a bit of a chat, talk about this and that. So are you up for that, Deborah? Yes. We'll yeah, get yes. In. Well, we're going to, actually, we're going to go in, aren't we? If we can get in. If we can get in. That's the look of the Perry's. Every time we go somewhere, you know, to go, it's either you've got to pay to go into somewhere which you never had to go. I'll tell you what's coming in October. Elvis exhibition down there. Of course, we'll miss that one as well, won't we? The look of the Perry's. There's just no, there's no tune to that. I've lost it. She's off. I'll just. I mean they're alright, they're not bad. I just can't hear myself think. Why is it when you've got somebody playing some music, there's always a little kid in front of them dancing to the same with the same dance though? That's it. Should fall over, shouldn't it? That'd be comedy goal. What's this? The National Gallery. I went into the National Portrait Gallery yesterday. It, it was like, uh, well, it was good. There were some strange things in there. Some things I particularly didn't want to see. Gilbert and George spring to mind. That gives us a little bit of shock factor. Wow. So on the end of this video, so on the end of this video, I will take you through a bit about, you know, these and what they're about. And uh, I want to thank Deborah, not the Debs, even though I'm going to call her the Debs on my Instagram account all the time. I want to thank her once again for having a, a lovely trip to London. That's the second time we've been this year. I don't think we'll get a third time in, will we? Not yet, not this year. And uh, if you ever get the chance, go and see Abba. It is Abba. I'll not spoil any of the surprises for you because a lot of surprises in that. Uh, Stage show, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that you wouldn't expect, and the the screen is huge, and it's just the whole auditorium is purpose built for other, and uh, <laughs> I put myself there. I don't know why. And uh, so yeah, so thanks the Deborah for <laughs> coming on the video, and don't forget, because you've heard it here first, and she's agreed to it. You will be you you have you will be coming on the video to do a ranking of the Star Trek movies. No, because I don't know enough about them. You know what you want to say? Which was your favourite one? It was this. Well, don't you, tell them what it is. I'm mad because ah. I said, oh, are they like Blu-rays? And you said they were 4K. I know. <laughs> I put them in, right? Fair enough, the first two look, look really good and the three, four and five and six look lesser on the, the 4Ks, but some of them had some stunning stuff and some of them were a bit soft and that. So at, on uh, Star Wars 6, or Trek 6, you said, I said, what did you think of the quality? I said, you can talk about the quality and how much you thought of the uh, the 4K quality. And you said? I thought they were Blu-rays. Oh, I thought they were Blu-rays. I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing it. And I said, In fact, they look like DVDs. Don't you dare. Where's me ladders? Huh? You know what I mean? That's That's really bad. You know, fancy doing that live. On a video saying that. Anyway, right? That's enough for her now. She's going to uh, now go and finish off the job in the garden. And, because uh, John won't do the garden in case he comes across an animal. A frog. What happened? I've got to think about that. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. The frog massacre. Well, anyway, yeah. So, I'll, how long is this? 23 minutes. Yeah. Hopefully, we want to be having 23 minutes of us blethering. It'll be chopped down a little bit. Right. Well, hang on. Hang on. No. So you're coming back 
to do a Star Trek um, ranking. You just have to you just have to see it, which you think was the best, which was not they were all good. Yeah, no, but I can't remember them because, like I say, we have now gone on to the Bionic Man. Well, six million dollar man. You know that nobody's bionic in uh, Star Trek, so you've got that going for you, right. haven't you? Right. Anyway, actually, six million dollar man. The best episode we have seen thus far has four or four set majors in it. Do you agree? What episode that is? Because it's all over. No, that they're just uh, putting anything they want on it, and I thought they would show them in sequence. And then when you go into a movie database, none of them are adding up to what they should be. The first episode isn't even the first episode on any movie database, if that makes any sense. Right. Right, so I'll uh, go upstairs now, and I'll do the, um, the well, not the rankings. I've got that in my brain. I'll talk about these ones and show you a few screenshots of what they're like and tell you if the what they look like picture quality wise so it's good night from me for the moment and good night from him <laughs> so before i talk about these movies i've been kindly invited on the two live streams first being scott the movie critic on friday the 15th and also dan's man cave on sunday the 24th i don't think the links for those live streams have gone live yet but I will link the channels down below. It's got the movie critic and also Dan's Man Cave. It'd be great to see you on the, the live stream if you come over and have a chat. And uh, I can't wait to chat with these two channels. I've been asked a few times to come on their channels. And luckily, the schedule has, has kind of made it happen this month. And uh, it's going to be great to finally chat to some of these guys in real life. Because I've talked to them lots of times in comments, but not actually had the chance to talk to them face to face, which is absolutely brilliant. So thanks once again to Scott and Dan. Links down below for inviting me onto their live streams. So, the movies. First up is See No Evil. Now, the weird thing, the good thing about these movies is they're always in a sale. But they don't have anything on the back that tells you about these movies. But you can look at it in a movie database like a half. But the main reason why I want to pick this up, because way back when, my good friend Lauren from Lauren's Collection, what a great channel. Sadly, I can't link that one down below at the moment because it's not live. But I hope that Lauren comes back to YouTube at some point in the future and we can see some more of her stuff because her videos for me were absolutely brilliant. And I got a load of recommendations, this being one of them. I remember Lauren talked very highly about this movie. In any movie that Lauren talked highly about, I used to always keep it in mind for picking up one day. So when I saw this, I thought, yes, I'll get this on Lauren's recommendation from probably a few years ago. Now, this is, it's funny because I can't really talk about the movie, I haven't seen it, but off, Lauren was saying that it's about this uh, this person who is blind and she is in this house and she's getting kind of terrorised by somebody in the house who's obviously can see it, but she can't see the person, but she knows someone's there and it's really kind of, it's sort of a really good thriller. As with all of these movies, I'm going to take some screenshots, bear in mind, they're just taking off my phone at night and you get a sort of idea to what you what you install with, if you're looking for a good presentation or a bad one. So this one here comes across really good. It's from 1971, so it's not going to look startling. And I don't know if it's a big budget movie or not. It's only 88 minutes or 89 minutes. It's got two versions on here, which I didn't know about. And I think there's some subtle changes to some of the movies. I don't think the movie has got that much change in it, but it's got enough to kind of warrant having the two the two versions on here. But really interesting seeing this. And I thought this uh, this movie looked quite decent as well. So big shout out to Lauren's collection, that's See No Evil. Next up, in Seminoid. This movie is from 1981, and it's a Section 3 video nasty. That meant that if this was put on the shelf in the video shop, if a policeman walked into the, the video shop, they could seize this movie, even though it's not going to be prosecuted. The actual, the people who were against the video nasties, they had a list of ones that they could seize if they wanted to. So that meant the video shop would probably not put this on the shelf. Now, the funny thing about this is it's rated now as a 15. Now, I've seen this movie before, and it's a sci-fi space movie. And I think it borrows a lot from Alien. Now, the chest buster is the alien sort of gag. And this one's a different kind of buster. Now, yes, I'm going to not say too much more about that, because you know what YouTube are like when they, they don't like certain things you talk about. I'm quite interested by the fact that it is directed by Norman J. Warren as well, who has directed quite a few stuff in the indicator 
releasings and uh, they are quite low budget to say the least. But I have seen this movie and it's got a really wide widescreen as well. 2.3 2 to 1, that's quite thick bars. When I put it on, I was expecting it to look quite grubby because the version I've seen before, that especially on VHS, looked pretty, um, you know, pretty, pretty rough. But then again, it wasn't in widescreen. It would be interesting now to see this movie in widescreen, like a cinematic view of it. And to be honest, it looked much better than I thought it was going to look. So that's in Seminoid. Next up is the Snorkel. When I went looking on the shelves in the indicator section, I did notice there's quite a few Hammer films here, and I thought this is a good way to sort of bolster up my Hammer collection. I know these have probably been released in the box set, which I haven't got, and uh, I do like the look of those box sets. But when I saw these ones, I thought, right, I'm just going to get these ones, even though they're not really Hammer horror. Some of them are kind of are. This movie's from 1958, it's in black and white. And when I put it on, it was quite grainy, if I'm honest. Now, the screenshot that I took of it, it looks, you know, it, it looks, you can see a bit of grain on it, but the grains seemed to show up more when I was actually watching it to watch that it came through on my phone. Now, I haven't seen this movie, but when I handed in to the guy to pay for it, he said, my God, the end in this movie is really good. Maybe that's why I got into so much trouble. So even though it's only a 12, I thought that's got my interest up. That's the snorkel. Next up, the camp on Blood Island. Now this is 1958 again in black and white, and it looked pretty good actually, pretty sharp. Now the Hammer have done a lot of movies, did a lot of style of movies, they've done sort of these ones, they've done uh, war movies, which this is one is, you wouldn't think it was for this title, but it's, I'm fascinated by anything that Hammer's put out. They've put out comedies like On the Buses, they've done a, a wide range of movies, not just Hammer Horror. Hammer Horror is the best part of Hammer for me, but I'm interested to see what they look like because they've probably got the same production crew in here, maybe in the same sets on some of these movies, and I want to see what they do outside the horror realm. So it'll be interesting to see some non-horror from Hammer. That is The Camp on Blood Island. Next up is The Damned. This movie is from 1962. It's black and white again. It's got a 2K restoration on here and looks really good. Again, I don't know too much about this movie. Although when I put it on, I was flicking through it. I did know that I've seen this somewhere before. Probably because it's got Oliver Reed in. Big fan of Oliver Reed. And it says all of them doomed by the lurking unseen evil. So that sounds like it could have some kind of, I don't know, some association with horror. But probably not. But with a title like that, it's great. But it looks a bit more of a teen drama as well. I don't know. But I'm interested to see it. That's The Damned. And lastly, from the indicator titles, is Never Take Sweets from a Stranger. Now, I've heard a lot of people going on about this movie, saying it's really good. I mean, it's not a horror film, but it's obviously got subjects in that are kind of horrific. And, yeah, so a movie from 1960 dealing with subjects like this, it's, it's something that's really intriguing to see how they, how they handle stuff like this in that time. Black and white again, and the picture quality in here, it looks great. But this is one I've been looking out for quite a while with, and I haven't come across it yet. And I really want to, um, I mean, I want to watch all of these, but maybe this is one that I'm most intrigued about, because it's one of those ones where you think, yeah, how are they going to handle this? So that's Never Take Sweets from a Stranger. Next up is The Swinging Cheerleaders. This is an hour release, and I've flipped the cover around on this. I do prefer this cover. The best thing about this was it's £8, but you get a po the postcard in here the R card, and you do get a booklet in there as well. I think you got a flyer in there. And you also get on the, the uh, flyer for the, what's he called again? Tinto Brass movies. Now, those movies are, well, they are what they are. But why don't Arrow go back and probably through rights issues, why don't they go back and get some of the Russ Meyer movies on, which I think are brilliant. Yes, they're a bit extreme in places, but they're so much fun. So I put this on, this is a Jack Hill movie from 1974, so that ticks all the boxes for me. Jack Hill is an amazing director, and all the stuff I've seen of him has always been great. When I put it on, as I thought, with Arrow, got a brand new 2K restoration from the original film materials. It looked excellent. So this is Jack Hill's entry into the cheerleaders genre. 
but they know they even was one. Interested to see it? That's the swinging cheerleaders. Next is Ace Ventura 2 movie collection. This is on Arrow label. That's the sort of when you used to release them, not really as an Arrow title, but it's definitely Arrow releasing. And disappointingly, it is it is the movies on one disc. I was hoping they'll be on separate discs. I do love these movies. In fact, I'm a big fan of Jim Carrey. Me and my son watch these movies back to back all the time. He loved these, and so I've watched these. I mean, I've watched them. I would watch them a lot anyway. But you know, when you're watching them with a young kid, they want to watch them 300 times a, a day, which is no no problem to me. I can sit through these movies and know them like the back of my hand. And I've always thought I would love to get these on on um, Blu-ray, but I didn't even know there was a Blu-ray out of this. I probably haven't looked for it. That's why I didn't know. I mean, it's probably been out for years. But so when I put it on. I thought that Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, looked pretty good, but the best one out of the two was When Nature Calls. So I'll show you the screenshots of them both. So when I was flicking through Pet Detective, I came across the amazing cameo by Cannibal Corpse when they're playing their hit song, Hammer Smash Face. I would imagine everybody out there has seen this movie. And there's the talk of them doing the third one. I don't know. I'll keep hearing that. But it probably won't happen now. I think he's retired. So that's Ace Ventura 2 movie collection. Next up is Star Trek, the animated series. Now, what I wanted to check with this one was that it was every episode on here, which it is. And this, it's got the original cast on here, which it has. So if you're thinking about why would you get this, it's kind of the best sort of thing to do with the original Star Trek thing the closest to seeing them but it's animated and i put it on i thought this one would look good because all the stuff to do with uh, star trek usually looks pretty good especially the original series looks amazing so this one didn't disappoint it looked absolutely brilliant so i don't know when we're going to get around to watching this because it's still got a lot of the original star trek episodes to watch they're about an hour long as well which i only thought they were half an hour these are half an hour episodes now the devs You've seen the Debs at the start of this video and we're talking about the whole stuff uh, that we did on my holidays, but it's not the whole episode. It's not the whole thing that we recorded. I recorded a lot more. So what I'll do is in future videos, I'll put them in uh, so you can see more of the Debs because there's a lot more than I've shown on this video. Also, it was quite a long section, which I've cut out of this video it would make this video quite long. It's when I had this quite interesting conversation. It wasn't an argument. It was a conversation about trying to find the perfect natural platter in London. And nothing on there said what yeah. you were asking. But did you at one any point tell me that? Yes. When? Numerous times. Numerous times. So that discussion will appear on future videos. And also, I have got other stuff of us walking around London, which will appear in future videos. But this is, for me, it's a welcome addition to the collection. I don't know at this point, I've said this before, I don't know if I'll go further in the, the Star Trek stuff. I will watch the pre the prequel series that's just been on to do with this, but we've got to watch all of this first. Probably watch this one before I watch that one. And uh, yeah, excited to get it, excited to watch it. That's Star Trek, the animated series. Last up, Thor, Love and Thunder, 4K. That's got an absolutely beautiful slip. I knew when this came out, I want to get it. I don't pick up many of the Marvel Universe, but when I do, I always get them on 4K. They look pretty good. So I put it in, think this would look great, and of course the 4K on it, especially the colours, look absolutely incredible. I like the way he's gone, and I just like the humour in this movie, and it looks absolutely spectacular on 4K. So that's Thor, Love and Thunder. So, thanks for watching, and it's been great to share, it's been great to finally get the Debs onto this video, and... It hopefully she will come and definitely well she's broken the ice now hasn't she and she didn't seem to be phased by it so I don't think she, she'll ever watch it like through and all that I don't think I'll put in the TV and she'll probably say get that off but yeah so it was great to have her on this video and don't forget to check out those two live streams I'm on from Scott and Dan really excited to go on to them it's going to be great to chat with them thanks for watching you take care and I will see you on the next video cheers